This is Captain Preston's Boston Massacre account. On Monday night at about 8 o'clock, two soldiers were attacked and beaten. The townspeople broke into two meeting houses and rang the alarm bells, which I suppose was for fire as usual. But it was soon discovered there was no fire. At about 9 o'clock, some of the soldiers came and informed me that the townspeople were assembling to plan an attack against the troops, and that the bells were ringing to bring in people from the county. I was in charge of alerting the troops and assembling them to hold the townspeople. On my way, I saw the townspeople in great commotion and heard them using the most cruel and horrid threats against the troops. In just a few minutes, about a hundred people passed and went towards the custom house where the king's money is kept. The townspeople immediately surrounded the soldier who was posted outside and with, and with clubs and other weapons threatened to attack. I was soon informed by a townsman their intention was to carry off this soldier from his post and probably murder him. On hearing this, I ordered him to make sure that the townspeople were planning on harming the guard. He returned, me, he returned and assured me that he'd heard the mob declare they would murder him. I feared this all might be a plot to steal the king's money. I immediately sent an officer and 12 men to protect both the soldier and the king's money. I followed soon after to prevent any possible escalation. The last thing I wanted was a rash act that would harm the people. The soldiers soon rushed through the people and, by charging their bayonets in half circles, kept them at a little distance. I was not trying to harm anyone, so I didn't have the troops load their weapons, nor did I give orders to load them while they were there. My intent, my intent was to have my men act defensively. I would not order them to attack in any way. The mob of townspeople was growing and they were becoming more outrageous, striking their clubs against one another and yelling, come on, you rascals, you bloody backs, you lobster scoundrels, fire if you dare. We know you dare not. And much more terrible and strong, strong language was used. During this time, I had put myself between the soldiers and the mob to persuade them to leave peaceably. It, but it didn't work. The townspeople advanced to the point of their bayonets. They struck some of them and even the muzzles of the muskets and seemed to be surrounding the soldiers, on which some well-behaved persons asked me if the guns were loaded and ready to fire. I replied, yes. Then they asked me if I intended to order the men to fire. I answered, no, by no means, reminding them that I was in front of the soldiers and that if I ordered them to fire, I could be shot myself. While I was speaking, one of the soldiers, having received a severe blow with a stick, stepped a little on one side and instantly fired. I turned around and asked him why he fired without orders. As I was asking the soldier, I was struck with a club on my arm which stunned me. Had it been a blow to the head, it would, it would have surely killed me. It was after this attack on myself and the soldier, the townspeople started attacking using a great number of heavy clubs and throwing snowballs at us. We thought our lives were in danger. The townspeople at the same time were calling out from behind, why don't you fire? Instantly, three or four of the soldiers fired one after another directly after three or more, three, directly after three more in the same confusion and hurry. The mob of townspeople then ran away, except three unfortunate men who lay dead. The whole sad event lasted only 20 minutes at most. When I asked the soldiers why they fired without orders, they said they heard the word fire and thought it came from me. This might be the case, as many townspeople in the mob were calling out, fire, fire, but I assured the men that I gave no such order that my words were, don't fire, stop your firing. In short, it was scarcely possible for the soldiers to know who said fire or don't fire or stop your firing. When the townspeople came back to take the dead bodies, the soldiers thought they, thought they were coming back to attack them. So they got ready to fire again, which I prevented, holding my hand in front of their weapons. Immediately after this incident, a townsman came and told me that four or 5,000 people were assembled on the next street and had sworn to take my life and everyone who was with me. 
I thought it was unsafe to stay there any longer, and I told the men to retreat to our main base where we could regroup. Our council was immediately called, and three justices met and issued a warrant to arrest me and eight of the soldiers. Upon hearing this, I instantly went to the sheriff and surrendered myself, although for about four hours I thought about making an escape, which I, I should have attempted and easily could have executed had I thought I was at all guilty of any wrongdoing. And so this is Captain Preston's uh, uh, version of the Boston Massacre account.